Good morning. It's Thursday, April 16th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Hidden Brides and Little Foxes, and our scripture's Song of Solomon, Chapter 2. The young woman speaks, My lover said to me, Rise up, my darling, come away with me, my fair one. Look, the winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up, the season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of turtle doves fills the air. The fig leaves are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. The young man speaks, Rise up, my darling, come away with me, my fair one. My dove is hiding behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliff. Let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is pleasant and your face is lovely. The young women of Jerusalem respond, Catch all the foxes, those little foxes, before they ruin the vineyard of love, for the grapevines are blossoming. There are a lot of interpretations for the song. There is relatively modern thought that it's just straightforward poetry about love. Solomon was not only wise, he was a brilliant composer of artistic bent. Some see the Shulamite version where Solomon is so captured by the princess of Ethiopia, he attempts to win her heart by whisking her away to Jerusalem and dazzling her with his accomplishments, but she's in love with another. And there's also the metaphor for God as the bridegroom with Israel as his bride. Of course, many New Testament era scholars also accept this for the church as the bride of Christ. I'm not taking issue with any of this thinking. This morning, I'm seeing in Solomon's verse, the hidden bride, the church behind the rocks with her lovelier side of beauty nearly altogether unseen by the rest of the world. In recent years, the gnawing feeling in the pit of my stomach is growing because the bride, Christ's church, looks bedraggled and haggard with all of her knocked down, drag out, brawling over doctrines, and who's fit to do whatever. The little foxes of selfishness and hedonism are taking bites out of the bride and knocking a good bit of luster off the wedding pictures. I've never been a wedding planner or a coordinator, but I've been close enough to weddings for a long time to know that there's a lot of holding it together that happens on the big day. There are wardrobe failures, missing people and forgotten essentials to be found. And if you throw in meltdowns from flower girls or a ring-bearing four-year-old boy who'd rather be doing anything than wearing shiny shoes that hurt and a tuxedo, whatever that might be, it's a wonder you ever get to the I do's. Drama is a real part of life. I think we all know that. But the church is not a place for the kind of drama with which we've all become familiar. That kind of drama caused by selfish control issues, rigid religiosity, and tradition-bound gatekeepers who couldn't recognize a new wineskin if it jumped out of their musty closet and screamed, Use me! Before it's too late, or that new wine is going to spill all over your carpeted faith. The bride has been fighting again is how Chuck Swindoll so picturesquely characterized the lack of love we see in a bride, the church, which fails in her lover's request to rise up, my darling, come away with me. Instead, the bride now hears and fears the same voice heard so long ago in that beautiful garden when forbidden fruit was sweeter than obedience. Where are you, my darling? What have you done? For you today, the response of one who is loved is rightly to love. And so it's not up for debate what the church needs to do as the object of God's love. What the church needs to do is rise up like the darling she was created to be and bring that beautiful face of loving service out from behind the rocks. We know what she must do. The real question is, Will she do it? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.